In today's A-Level IB Biology video, we're going to be discussing the breathing system, so the respiratory system, in great detail, starting with a look at the anatomy, followed by an in-depth examination of how we take a breath in, an inhalation, and a breath out, an exhalation. So here we have a diagram. Now notice that we breathe in either via our nose or our mouth. That air is taken down the windpipe, which remember its scientific name is the trachea, and that is reinforced with cartilage. It effectively stops the trachea from collapsing. The branching of the trachea is known as the bronchi. The smaller branches are known as the bronchioles. And then at the very end, we have the air sacs known as alveoli. Looking in greater detail at the alveoli, we've zoomed in here. They have a grape-like structure in order to increase the surface area to volume ratio. And why is that important? Well, it's to enable as much gas exchange to take place as possible. And what is gas exchange? Well, effectively, it's oxygen entering the blood and carbon dioxide leaving the blood. And how does that happen? Through small blood capillaries. So each alveolar air sac has a large network of blood capillaries and that allows gas exchange to take place nice and quickly. Now we're going to take a look at an inhalation versus an exhalation. Inhalation, remember, is when you take a breath in. And exhalation is when you take a breath out. Now notice that there are very many muscles involved in both actions. These muscles are antagonistic, which means that they cause the opposite movement from each other. So effectively, whatever happens in an inhalation, the opposite will happen for an exhalation. So the first thing that takes place with an inhalation is that the external intercostal muscles contract. And the real effect of that is that the rib cage moves up and outwards. If you have a look at what's happening to the diaphragm, well, you can see here on the left-hand side that the diaphragm has flattened, it has contracted. The effect of both of these actions is to increase the volume within the chest cavity, that is known as the thorax. Hopefully you're aware that when volume increases, by definition, therefore, the pressure, the air pressure will decrease. And so at this point, you can make a comparison between the air pressure within the thorax compared with the outside atmospheric air pressure, and that is that the air pressure inside the thorax is less than the air pressure outside. And this has the knock-on effect of meaning that air enters the lungs. Now with an exhalation, obviously we're forcing air out of our lungs. And because antagonistic muscles are involved, we're going to notice that every single step is going to be the opposite to what we wrote for the inhalation. So just make sure you learn all the steps for the inhalation and then just reverse them for the exhalation. And that stops you learning things twice. So firstly, the external intercostal muscles will relax, therefore the rib cage moves down and in. We can see that the diaphragm moves upwards, it becomes more dome-shaped and that means it's relaxed. This has a knock-on effect of meaning that the volume inside the thorax decreases. A smaller volume means that the air pressure increases inside the thorax. The air pressure inside the thorax is now more than that in the surrounding air. and therefore air is forced out of the lungs. 